Good afternoon guys, my name is Brandon and today we've got another fun build coming right up, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. So for today's project, we're gonna be trying to solve a little bit of a problem. If you have a SUV or a car, sometimes hauling a bicycle becomes problematic. So today we're gonna to try to work through that dilemma, um, try to burn up some of our scrap material. You guys know that I love to uh, use up scrap and we're gonna see if we can come up with a very simple, lightweight, easy design uh, for a vehicle mounted bike carrier rack. So with that being said, Let's get going. That's the stuff we're going to be working with. So we got to go outside and do a couple test fits and let's go do that now. We're not going to dilly dally out here too long, but what the idea is, is I'm going to take this square tubing and I'm going to try to put that in there like that. Mark it out. Let's kind of look down this a little bit. So probably we'll cut it like something like this maybe. There and we'll just draw where the end of that, where the end of the receiver comes out. Alright guys, so we're back in the workshop. Here's the hole I made. That's where our hitch pin has to go through. This is the end of where the actual hitch on the vehicle was and I think we're going to cut it somewhere along here and what the idea is is we're going to put some of these bends in 90s and uh, we're going to make a real simple bike rack. This shouldn't be a big deal so let's get back to it. Hey guys, while I was grinding off that little uh, stub that was on the side of one of the pipes, I want to bring you in, I want to show you something, I've never seen it before. So normally, weld would be like silver color, but look at this, it's gold. When I was grinding off that little stub that was over here, and look at all the little shavings from it. So in my experience, that's a little unusual. It looks almost to me as though this was brazed on there, that little nipple that was attached to the pipe had been brazed on. It just seems weird that they would braze that together out of all the processes and use some sort of brass type rod. But anyways, let's get back to it. Alright guys, that wasn't uh, too pretty, but we got it done, right? So now I'm going to bring you into a little quick pro tip. So see what's happened here? This nut backed off obviously while I was still drilling and the pin that normally engages into this hole saw, now the bit is completely wound on here and you got to try to get it off. So let me show you a little quick tip on how to do that when this happens because it does more often than I'd like to say. So, Alright, so one of the first things you're going to want to do is when you get the bit wound on like this, go right around it with a hand, excuse me, with a hammer and just hit it. Try to hit it on this corner where I'm hitting it right now. What that does is that creates 
some stress inside the inside the uh, bit. Usually, it'll come right off with hand pressure. You know, I've seen guys put pipe wrenches on these and completely destroy the tool. You know, there's really no need of it. Look, there we go. And it came right off. So it's as simple as that. Um, a lot of times you'll see that um, with the bigger hole saws, you know, four inch or something like that, they're a little bit harder. But don't hit, if you have a big hole saw on it, don't hit um, the area in here. Try to hit along the perimeter here. Certainly don't hit it here because you're gonna you're gonna end up destroying it. Just hit it with a hammer all the way around it. You don't gotta go crazy. Uh, don't put a pipe wrench on it. Don't put adjustable wrenches on it. You're just gonna do nothing but destroy it. So um, give it a little tap all the way around. Usually comes right out real quick. Thought I'd pass that on to you guys. You hear that? Whenever you weld around magnets, uh, it tends to draw the weld puddle towards the metal. So that's the crackling sound that you hear. So now all we got left to do guys is to wire brush everything down, sand it, give it a coat of paint and try it out and see how it works. So let me get to that right now. So when you're doing something simple like this, you got to add something, just a little element that gives it a little bit of class. I think we're going to wrap this thing in some bison leather that I got from Tasman Leather, uh, TasmanUSA.com. That's all left over from the Ultimate Shop Stool build I, build I did. So here it is. This is just a must. Put me in perspective. I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now. We know I ain't brought it yet. I know, oh no, I don't call him back. Girl, let me see you hold it down. We gon' have a blast. Cause I just wanna know what you gonna do with all of that. I ain't gotta say a word. I know what's up. There, and that's all there is to it, guys. You can see here that little hook that holds on the cord, the bungee cord. The leather wrap prevents the uh, metal frame from getting scraped up. This isn't going anywhere. This isn't coming off. Super strong, super solid. And it serves the purpose. 
Let's get inside. It's freezing out here. And that, guys, is just one way to go about building a bicycle rack if you have a car or an SUV. So if you have any comments, please leave them down below. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I try to comment to every one of, uh, one of you guys. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for giving me your time and tuning in. And take care. See ya. Come, come, come.